ADHD. And so defiance is, defi is defined uh, as uh, refusal to obey, uh, open resistance. And I guess I wanna start by saying the kids are defiant for a reason. Maybe they feel controlled. Maybe they don't feel, they feel disempowered, disrespected, frustrated, unheard or unseen. Take a minute and if you're a parent and you're here about your child, think about what might be contributing to defiance in them. Defiant kids reject a parent or other adult as their leader or teacher. And defiance shows us that a child feels disconnected from a parent, from peers, from themselves. They lack confidence in their abilities that can also contribute to defiance. And we know that punishment makes defiance worse. So we want to focus on logical consequences with clear limits because this is more effective. So let me say a few words about some of the diagnoses, two of the diagnoses in particular travel with ADHD that have to do with um, uh, explo explosiveness. So we have oppositional defiant disorder, which I believe is a relationship problem. Um, and it occurs about 40% of the time uh, in kids with ADHD. And it's a pattern of extreme disruptive behavior and ang an angry, irritable mood. Boys with ODD can be more physically aggressive with explosive anger. And girls with ADD may lie more often, refuse to cooperate, or demonstrate passive aggression. Many kids with ADD and ODD are showing oppositional characteristics by default. They may misbehave not because they're intentionally oppositional, but because they cannot control their impulses. Now, there are some kids with ADHD who are oppositional on purpose. That is definitely true. So in order to get a diagnosis of oppositional defiant disorder along with ADHD, you have to meet the criteria for both. At least four of the following symptoms must be present um, consistently for six months or longer to, meet the, to merit an ODD diagnosis. Loss of temper, argument with adults, actively defies or refuses to comply with adults' requests or demands, deliberately annoys people, blames others for his or her mistakes or misbehavior, easily annoyed by others, angry and resentful, spiteful or vindictive. These are kids who have, may have tantrums due to an inability to control their temper. They may have tantrums also because they're spiteful. They upset other people on purpose and they blame others for their own mistakes. When, if, if they're overly excited and hurting a classmate while playing, they might lash out and blame the classmate and then refuse to apologize. This is different from intermittent explosive disorder. An intermittent explosive disorder is, something, is, a, is a diagnosis of reoccurring outbursts involving verbal or behavioral aggression twice a month for a minimum of three months. Three behavioral outbursts involve damage to property and or, and or physical result of those outbursts, and the magnitude of aggression is disproportionate and out to the events of the situation. And the difference between this and some of the oppositional defiant uh, qualifications is that aggressive outbursts do not need to be premeditated to receive this diagnosis. Now, I do want to say one thing about um, pathological demand avoidance, which co-occurs with ADHD and autism spectrum disorders. Um, pathological demand avoidance um, is part of the autism spectrum. It's characterized by an overwhelming need to avoid or resist demands. And so when we're with these kids, we have to avoid using demanding words. We need to use inclusive language and take a teamwork approach. Another characteristic of pathological demand avoidance is an obsessive resistance to ordinary demands and requests. And so there's a use of socially manipulative or outrageous behavior to avoid demands. Sudden changes in mood may, appear, may occur that are associated with a need to control. Um, these kids are super sensitive to words that are demand words. And I see this in kids with ADHD 
ODD and uh, IED, which is intermittent explosive disorder, which is that they, uh, they, they don't react well to demand words such as need, must, must not, will, won't, can't. And so in these situations, we want to make requests rather than demands. Um, how do you feel about? Do you mind doing? What could you, would you, if you're happy to? When you finished with X, could you do Y? Instead of get out your homework now, try, I'm really looking forward to working together at family time where you do your homework and I do my thing. So we want to use words like us, we, let's, together. And of course, we want to thank kids and notice when they follow through on what we ask them to do. So I've now described three different ways in which kids can um, struggle with uh, aggression um, while having an, um, uh, an ADHD diagnosis. I did not get into conduct disorder so much because that's much less common and it's very specific, but in conduct disorder, we'll see kids purposefully hurt um, purposefully for hurt animals, um, purposefully hurt other people, um, not, you know, go beyond the limits of what is appropriate in terms of social uh, norms and stuff like that. So I thought what we could do today, because this is such a big topic, and now that I've laid out some different ideas, is that, you know, we'll just launch into your questions and comments. And if I do not get your question because Facebook speeds through while I'm trying to get to them, please post it again. So let's see. Um, can you please give us some tools on how to deal with individuals with ODD and ADHD? Yes, of course. Um, uh, how to wake them up. Teenager, 14 years old. I am scared this way. He's going to not finish high school. Please help. Okay, so what you're talking about is how do you work with a child who has ODD and ADHD simultaneously? And the thing that I want you to say, is, that I want to say first and foremost, is let's remember my five C's. Self-control, consist, uh, excuse me, self-control, compassion, collaboration, consistency, and celebration. You as the adult must manage yourself first. As soon as you are dysregulated, it's it's throwing fire onto the, the, the build, the, it's throwing fuel onto the fire that is building in your child. And so what we want to do instead is, um, is, uh, is, uh, is, is a couple of different things. So counseling can be very helpful for kids with ODD along with ADHD medication and sometimes um, a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, inhibitor, sometimes other medications that might treat uh, depression uh, or mood um, liability, that can be very useful. And I think that's important to talk about with your prescriber. Um, when we're thinking about treatment for ODD, it usually involves a blend of individual and family therapy or parent training. Family therapy can improve communication and parent-child interactions, as well as offering parents support. Um, but the counseling has to include the child to focus on ways that everyone can cope with these, beha these inappropriate behaviors. Um, um, pa parent management training in which parents learn to change the way they react to their kids' behaviors is extremely effective. And that can be a component of family therapy or it can be something that happens on its own. Um, uh, when we're thinking about um, defiance and disrespectful behavior, what we want to remember is that this behavior is a red flag. It is a signal that something isn't working in this relationship. And it, this is not, I'm not pathologizing anyone, I'm not judging anyone. It is a, sig a signal that things are not right here. And you can't change this on your own and we can't ask them to change it completely on their own. So what we have to think about is that pushback and oppositional behavior can mask other emotions such as anxiety, depression, hurt, sadness, disappointment. It, it, the anger is the gatekeeper for a lot of emotions for kids with ADHD. And kids act out when they're bored, when they're frustrated, when they're angry, 
when they're confused or they're anxious. We're going to expect this and we're not going to address problem behaviors in the moment of that acting out. Instead, in calm moments, we're going to create a plan for success and put in non-cooperation clauses using the earned privileges mindset that we talk about a lot here. So sometimes kids need to refuse. Um, what areas in your child's life does your child have the freedom to say no? And this, what's very helpful in this situation is that we give kids what I call directed free choice. You can do this, this, or this. Those are the options. And then they get, they get the freedom of picking one of those. And of course, there are options, maybe two that are yours, uh, or you, you've created those options at another time. Or they don't have a choice on what the options are. You're just saying, here's the options. Your freedom is in choosing one. Um, your goal, and this is very hard, is to maintain your support and your steadiness and in the face of to your child in the face of their irritating, frustrating, and scary behaviors that are masking whatever else is behind the anger gate. And that would include shame. They're acting out of control because they feel out of control. They don't know how to assert themselves appropriately. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I, if you need more information about the five C's, hi, Catherine, uh, I encourage you to go to my website, www.drsharonceline.com. Uh, you could also purchase my book or my card deck where I, the card deck is using, it, it applies the five C's in a really fun, tangible way. And the book is the book, which I love, of course because it's fine. Um, and also other people seem to love it, which is great. So the five C's are self-control, compassion, collaboration, consistency, and celebration. Uh, and I noticed that attitude responded to you and said ODD can persist into adulthood. Yes. And in some cases, it can escalate to a conduct disorder. A conduct disorder differs from ODD. Um, about 14% of kids with ADHD have a conduct disorder, and we see a conduct disorder in behaviors such as lying, stealing, destroying property, aggression toward people or animals, and serious violations of rules, including running away from home, truancy, and breaking the law. Okay, so anybody have some questions? Uh, Bruna, 12-year-old recommended partial hospitalization program by school and parents don't agree on medication. What do you recommend, please? Um, you know, I, 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 that, that's not quite enough information for me, um, but I do think that um, the first thing is that we have to get the parents on the same page, and that's in the best interest of the child, but also in the parents' relationship. And so I would recommend some family counseling immediately. I love Ryan Wexelblatt's work um, in, ADH, in boys with ADHD. That's really terrific. Hi, Lynn. Nice to see you. Um, the other Northampton. Um, Karen says, our psych just prescribed 0.5 milligrams of risperdone. Any thoughts? I, haven't, I have the med, but haven't started yet. I'm hesitating because this drug scares me. He's also on Vyvanse, Prozac, and Guamphacine, but he said we should stop the Guamphacine when starting the Risperdone. Well, I think for some kids who have very explosive anger, Risperdone can be very helpful. Um, it'll sort of even them out a bit, and that's a very low dose. Um, those are the only thoughts I have because I'm not actually a physician. Um, Heather, you want some help getting your son to shower and brush his teeth. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so I think that, you know, the thing that we want to do is we want to put the have to's before the want to's. So maybe, you know, brushing, taking a shower every day is linked to earning that bonus screen time. So he gets the baseline and then there's bonus chunks, maybe 30 minutes. Every day you take a shower, you get those 30 minutes. You brush your teeth, you get those 30 minutes. Some things that you're just trying to incentivize right now, because kids have lower amounts of motivation, right, because of COVID and the losses that they've experienced. 
So we want to try to help motivate him. Or you could have those things bundled up into one. You brush your teeth and you take a shower. That's 30 minutes. That would make sense. Jessica Lynn, no problem. Self-control, compassion, collaboration, consistency, and celebration. If you want to learn more about the five C's, this is your last chance. I'm starting a new parenting group April 5th. Signups will end on Monday. It's called More Than Grit. It's a six-week parenting class uh, and support group. Please go to my website to check it out and sign up. Is I follow him and apply his best strategies. He's been the best thing. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful about Ryan. Um, it's Sarah, that was a helpful reminder. I've worked in the field for 20 years and my own is pushing me. 11 years old, ran away on Tuesday because her backpack got taken away. Three hours later, saying she feels dumb for acting that way, no one will help her. I'm not sure what your question was, Sarah, because it disappeared into the vortex. So if you want to send it back, please do. Do teens with ADHD have issues with social skills? I find mine is okay being alone a lot of the time and doesn't even like going to family events. Any recommendations? Yes, plenty of, of kids of teens with, AD, with ADHD have social anxiety, and that's actually been higher now um, because of the isolation related to COVID. So um, I, I think what we want to do is start with small steps, very small steps. So let's, instead of going to a party, you know, why don't you come with me maybe to CVS or the, you know, the pharmacy or go, let's go, go get, pick up, get some ice cream, you know, small adding outings to get them out of the house and more comfortable with that. And then maybe having someone come and hang out in the backyard one person at a time. So we start small with little bits of exposure and then um, we see where it goes from there. Um, Harlan, I, I want to represent the anti-demand kids. Thank you, Harlan. Um, as one, it took, it was very hard and took decades to get this versus full board A. D ODD, which I did not exhibit. My testers were totally perplexed back in 1979. Okay, thanks for sharing. Um, the name of my book is What Your ADHD Child Wishes You Knew, Working Together to Empower Kids for Success in School and Life. What are the do's and don'ts when the teenager is already in an out uh, emotional outburst? Great question, Kate. Okay. So we're going. We're, since I'm going to assume that your child is not in a can, in, a, in an outburst right now, so let's dial it back. So in a calm moment, and you know, again, I'm a strong proponent of a weekly or short weekly or short biweekly family meeting to check in about things like school um, agreements that you've made, screen time, etc. So in this short moment, you agree what is going to happen when something's boiling up. What are the steps? I, I recommend something called Stop, Think, Act, which I talk about on my website and in my book and card deck. Stop, Think, Act. One, you dial up a pause right away. You an agreed upon pause. And what we're, we're, we're trying to help kids understand is when they are activated, their body is showing them that they are activated. Maybe they have a tightness in the stomach. Maybe they're starting to perspire. Everybody has their own signs. Um, I know for me, I get a shortness of breath. And so um, that's a sign for me that I need to slow things down. So we want to help kids identify when they're all headed, as I call, headed to the edge of the cliff before they jump off. So we want that, we want that to be something. We also want to have the, the ability to say when voices rise, this is a good time for a time apart. We're going to stop. And we're going to stop for 12 or 15 minutes because that's how long, minimally, it takes the system to calm down, to re-regulate. Re okay? Then you can come back together and do a think. What, what, um, you ask them, do you, have any, do you have anything you want to say about what was going on? And they say, blah, blah, blah. And you repeat, blah, blah, blah. Or you can say, uh, is, there any, is there something that you want to tell me now that you're calmer that you couldn't say before? 
Again, you repeat it back. This is not a teaching moment. This is just a listening. You hear them, you acknowledge their position, you don't solve anything. The next thing is what is the next right thing that we're gonna to do to move forward? So we may not be able to process that issue. We can say, you know, we're gonna talk about that later or at our next family meeting. What do we need to do next to move on? Are there amends that need to be made? Is there a genuine apology that needs to occur? Or do we just wanna go ahead and set the table and just let this sit, deal with it later? Because if the system is recalibrating, we don't want to stir it all up again. So we have a stop, a think, and an act. This way, when your child is activating, is gearing up, you can say, hey, you know what? We talked about this. Your voice is getting louder. I can see your, I notice you're getting upset. Let's have a time apart. I'll meet you back here in 15 or 20 minutes. You also will make a list during this agreement of things that are good to do during this time apart. Getting on your game is not a good option because you have to get off, but maybe listening to music, taking a walk, shooting some basketball hoops, uh, uh, whatever it is that might help you. Perhaps going for a run, stretching, coloring, um, petting the dog, any of the things that are going to help, help your system recalibrate. Um, Jody, when a child refuses counseling, what I do is I absolutely suggest family counseling. We're all going. It's not optional. You go, you can earn something. I worked with a, a young woman who had, was, had ADHD and definitely was a little bit um, ODD. She was oppositional. And she cursed me out in session a couple times, really inappropriately. And I called her parents and I said, I will not continue because they were sitting right there in session and letting her call me an effing B. That doesn't work for me because they're the parents. They should say something. So they made an agreement with their daughter every time she went to therapy and she didn't call me, like, start cursing at me or at them. She got $5 to go to CVS, which if you don't live in the United States, it's like a drugstore train, chain. And that was, a good, that was a good motivator for her. And so she was able to get something out of it. And so I would, in that case, link the counseling to something that your child wants. And it's a family thing. We're doing this as a family. You, it's, there's no option not to participate, just like there's no option not to participate in the family. Um, okay. Um, uh, thank you for posting that link. How do I get my 15 year old to do simple daily tasks without it being a drama test? Oh, drama fest, sorry. <laughs> Could be both. Uh, brushing teeth, showering, basic daily hygiene is a struggle. Cleaning her room is a meltdown. So, you know, I, I would actually sit down and ask your 15 year old, you know, what do you want to do for yourself? You know, how... Do you want to brush your teeth? Do you want to shower? Like, what are the days? You know, a lot of these uh, Generation Z kids don't shower every day. And that's okay. You know, sometimes we could get them to agree to every other day, but you got to brush your teeth every day. Again, I want to go back to this model of earned privileges. You do these things and you earn this thing. That's how we're going to get her. And in terms of cleaning up her room, her, that may be some, that may, the meltdown may occur because it's overwhelming to clean a room. So maybe the, the day one is pick up all, um, pick up all the socks and underwear from the floor. Next task, pick up the club, the shirts and pants from the floor. Um, and perhaps you could be there, put on some music, try to make it a little fun and be the folder. Or you could play a game like, who's going to pick up the most things from the floor? Go. Um, break it down. When tasks are broken down, they're not as intimidating, and it makes it easier for kids to do them. And the likelihood of them pushing back is smaller because it's like, okay, I only have to pick up my socks and underwear. I can do that. 
Um, oh, okay, it went fast again. Um, Annie, could you write down the five C's please for, for people because they keep missing it. Thank you. Um, can the effects of COVID make a child appear ODD? Uh, I think the effects of COVID can make kids appear anything. Um, I certainly think that um, oppositional behavior is more frequent right now um, than we would like to see and that kids are struggling with it quite a bit. What are your thoughts of taking the Xbox away when, with, when my son has explosions the majority of time when getting off it, he makes our household a living nightmare? Well, you know, I think if your son is having explosions when you take the Xbox away, what he's showing you is he's not quite ready for the privilege of using the Xbox. And so I would really kind of flip your whole um, uh, philosophy about screens on, on its head because your house shouldn't be a living nightmare. And so if he's not able to game and get off without losing everything, like losing his temper, fighting, yelling, cursing, then he's showing you that he's not ready for the privilege of gaming. And so I would renegotiate that with him very clearly and carefully. How to effectively set limits without escalating. My son loses his temper over very small things or tasks. His siblings avoid him, powder keg. I guess they call him powder keg. He is 14 and is swearing any suggestions. Um, how to effectively set limits. So again, I think that we wanna set limits in a calm time, and then we wanna ask kids, what do you think the consequences should be when you don't follow the agreement that we're making, the limits that we're setting? This way, kids have buy-in. I said this, I agreed to this, I have to follow this. Um, and I, one other question is like, why is he losing his temper? What is behind the, temp, the loss of temper? Is it a, a, feel, a sense of incompetence? Is it um, overwhelm? Is it trouble remembering things? I'd like to get more information about what's going on for your son. What's your opinion of Abilify? Abilify can be very helpful. I, I really can't speak to, um, I can't give you medical advice, um, but I know clients who've had ADHD and been on Abilify and it's been helpful. Um, there you go, Jessica. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Beth, is there something specific to say during an explosion when he starts hitting himself or saying how terrible he is? How frequent would those need to be before considering counseling? I think you're there. If, if someone, if a child during an explosion is, is hitting himself, hurting himself, putting himself down, you've arrived at the door of counseling because that's not okay, and that can't feel okay to him. Um, Lori, my five-year-old granddaughter relates to adults more than children, has broken iPad four times, her hysterical outbursts, and start crying about things that make her sad. So Lori, I'm gonna go back to the same thing that I said to this other person, uh, Linnell, which is if your five-year-old granddaughter is not able to manage herself with a screen and she's showing you that she's not able to, she's not ready to manage herself with a screen. And, you know, maybe you need a iPad break for a while and then you can slowly reintroduce it. But um, you want to be ahead of the screen uh, arguments and, the, and since she's five, you have all of the control. So I encourage you to start now. Lori, she also cries about her grandma who died a few years ago or anything that will make us feel sorry for her almost to deflect from the situation at hand. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, she's crying in a way to as, as, as an effort to get what she wants. So don't give it and let her and empathize with her sadness, hug her, offer to read her a story or have a snack, but certainly not to give in to the screen things because of that. Um, Vicki says, hard when hubby isn't always on the same page. Thank you so much for bringing this up, Vicki. So it's critical that parenting partners are on the same page about the big issues um, because otherwise the messages to kids are very confusing and then one parent is the bad cop and one parent is the good top. 
is the good cop, excuse me. And um, <laughs> there are there's the roles become rigidified, and it's and you want to have flexible roles in a family. So I would perhaps consider getting some counseling um, so that you could figure out what are the things that you're on the same page about and how to work through when you're not on the same page because you won't always be on the same page and that's okay. How are you gonna cope with that? Cassandra asks, what do you do when a child responds to even mild irritations and offense without, with either talk of hitting people or trying to hit people? My seven-year-old goes from zero to ready to fight in a matter of seconds. And if she ever does go back to school, we homeschool, I worry that she will not be able to control her anger. She's incredibly loving and cares deeply about people. And she has a big heart for people. But the moment someone makes her angry, that all goes out the window. So what your seven-year-old is showing you is that she doesn't have tools to manage her big feelings. And this happens to a lot of people because the amygdala takes over and the thinking brain you know, um, is a passenger in the car, not driving the car. And so what we want to try to do is to give her some specific tools, the first of which is noticing when the big feeling is happening. What are some signs and how do we meet those signs head on? Also, I would consider uh, counseling if she's not getting it and talking to your prescriber about medication. Okay. Jody, what do you do when child won't give you time apart? No place and home to lock doors. Um, the bathroom. And I would sit at the door of the bathroom with your back up to the bathroom. Um, because it, it, I don't know how old your child is. Um, the other option is sometimes parents will say, I'm taking a time out. I'm going outside. Um, and when I come back, I do not want to see destruction in the house. And if your child can't do that, then you can, you know, figure out something else, maybe get in the car. Um, but you, you have to agree on the time apart. And the other thing is, you know, you want to have built in clauses to whatever agreements you make, ever plans, because you're planning, you're preparing for success by creating a plan. And you're not going to plan for every possible outcome. You're talking about the process. So if I ask for a time apart and you won't give it to me, then automatically you're not going to earn this. But if I ask for a time apart and we do it, then you'll earn Y, okay? Um, okay. Um, emotional dysregulation, ODD and ADHD, very defiant 12 year old boy, history of self harm, what treatment do you recommend? One second. Um, I would recommend, Bruna, I would definitely recommend some counseling and possibly considering medication, although I think you said the parents don't agree on medication, so family counseling would be the way to start right now with some, uh, you know, individual sessions as well. Lynn, here's an explosion of the, here's an example of explosion anger. My son was having cancer treatment and was having a port removed. And Lynn gives a long example. And um, okay, you, you, he was angry and you got angry. Um, uh, you were not kind. Okay, thank you for sharing, Lynn. That's very brave of you. Um, Cassandra, when they have to pick up their room and it's really messy, I set a timer for 10 minutes and give them a task to pick up one thing. I love this. Pick up all the trash, then come back to me. Bravo. Uh, then, um, pick up all the toys and come back. They can take a small break. See, this is very clear, very specific, and this helps kids with ADHD do the tasks. Um, okay. Um, my nine-year-old son gets upset when the teacher gives attention or rewards to other kids, throws pens, knocks over water bottles, and kicks the desk. So my question is, what is do you think your son is feeling in those moments? And my guess is your son is feeling shame, that he's not that kid. And so what we want to try to do is to build up incidents where he is getting 
the uh, respect and the notice that he wants and desires um, so that he's not so jealous and envious of other kids. You know, there's a difference between jealousy, I want what you have, and envy, I want what you have and I can't have it, so I'm going to destroy you or things around me. And that's what I think is happening for him. How to insulate younger siblings from outbursts and constant arguments from an older sibling when it's time to do homework. It takes hours to do homework. Um, you know, probably what I would do, Danya, is, is break up homework into small chunks. So how long can the older sibling work before they need a break? Um, have the younger sibling present for a couple of those chunks, and when the younger sibling's finished, go somewhere else. I think when older siblings are, are breaking down and is taking hours, either they're doing their homework too late in the day and their brain's too tired, or um, it's too much. So we want to figure out an order to do the homework, hard, medium, easy, or easy, medium, hard. You know, what's going to help them get started and, and start a flow of working? And how long can they concentrate before they need a little break? And maybe it's three sessions of 10 minutes each with a jumping jack in between. Um, Lori, thank you so much. I watched the grandkids a few days a week and I met with opposition on screen time. Thank you for taking this time. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lori. That is so sweet. It's nice to hear. You're welcome, Jody. Um, Sue, currently on medication, sees a therapist whose teacher is great about talking to him about telling her his emotions. Right. And what we might want to do for him, Sue, is to have like maybe some cards, you know, index cards or something that's a sign. Like he's in the he's in the green zone, he's good. He's in the yellow zone, he's not feeling so great. And then in the red zone, he needs to take a break. And that can be very helpful for kids who are struggling to regulate. Um, <laughs> this is very funny, Sonia. We go through the same thing with hygiene. Jack is girl crazy, but doesn't seem to care if he smells like wild onions. It's just the brain developing or not developing. You know, they're, they're just not mature enough to understand if I smell gross, actually girls that want to going to want to be with me yet. Um, uh, you're welcome, Danya. Ma Maddie, can you speak on suggestions for RSD? Emotional explosions for young adults, adolescents, especially women. So, um, you know, what I would like to say is that, um, you know, girls, uh, the interesting thing is that boys tend to um, externalize their feelings in aggressive actions, and um, girls kind of have, vary. Sometimes they internalize, and you'll see more passive aggressive uh, expressions of anger, lying. Um, sneaking, um, behind the back activities, talking or whatever. Um, and then you will see girls who will actually be right out front with it. And so I think the thing that we want to talk about is we want to continue to ask this question is why, what is behind the, the, the defiance? You know, where can your kid refuse? Does your kid have an option to refuse? And what is the defiance? What is the explosion trying to communicate? That's very important for us to understand. Should TV count towards screen time? That's up to you, Karen. You know, I think, you know, not all screens are created equal. So maybe there's computer time, some phone time, or iPad time, and then there's TV. Um, and it might be fun, you know, in families to have a TV show or a series that you're watching. Occasionally, my 22-year-old daughter who lives in town comes over and, you know, she's watching, she's in, she was watching Stop, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm for a while. And that was a show that, you know, you don't have to know anything about what's going on. You just can watch it. And so I would plop on the couch, even though I had other things to do, and just sit with her for a half hour and watch it. And we would, you know, snicker. And it was just a little activity together. Um... How do you deal with kids who say they want to hurt themselves when they don't get what they want? Uh, I would not give in to that. That is, that's, those are threats, uh, and that's very manipulative. Um, I think if your child is, is hurt, it actually does attempt to do that, then you need more help than you're getting, both medically in terms of medication and counseling. Um, but your child is using every trick in their limited book to try to get you to give them what they want. 
and your job and and as a, and a, and our job as adults is to say I know you really want this but how, but here's the thing how you're going about getting it is not okay or you've had your your screen time for the day so this is not going to earn you any extra time no matter what you do and stay steady okay i don't see any more questions and we are almost at the end does anyone have a last question this is a good time to send it Take a minute and think about that. And I just want to remind you to uh, check out my website, www.drsharonceline.com. We talked about a lot of information today. And Catherine has a question. Thank you. My 15-year-old really is hating medication, even though it helps somewhat with school. Ideas to address. Um, I, I guess I'd want to know why your 15-year-old hates medication. Um, it helps somewhat with school. And maybe that's enough. Some kids feel like they're not themselves on it um, because it's not what they're used to, um, but they also have access to different parts of themselves and the opportunity to focus more uh, and be more productive. Um, so there is a trade off. Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Bruna, did we find out about defiance or anger after messy divorce? Um, well, you know, messy divorces, you know, maybe we should do a whole um, Facebook Live on parenting after divorce. Uh, and we'll talk about that. If people are interested in that topic, let me know. Um, but uh, parenting after divorce is very complicated, not only because of the reaction for kids, but also because parents aren't on the same page, which is even more confusing. Thanks, Patricia. Um, let's see, Amy, any advice for dealing with a senior boy headed to college in the fall, but being especially defiant right now? So, um, seniors in high school will be defiant, defiant. This is the second semester of their senior year. That's what they're supposed to do. They can't wait to get out of the house or go somewhere else, not live with you. So I would just go back to the building blocks and say, here's some of the house rules. Here's how we talk to each other in our family. Um, I know you're itching to, you know, sow your wild oats and you're not there yet. So let's figure out some things that you can do that are that are okay to for you to stretch and apply your independent your need for independence and your independent skills right now. You're welcome, Allie. Um, there's an article on in, in, in attitude has a lot of uh, information about natural supplements so check out their library um i i don't know jill about sleep apnea but um that, that's just not my specialty i do see kids with adhd who struggle with sleep um, but not all of them have an apnea um, should the 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 should a child be punished for the actual fight or the content of the fight well, I'm, I don't really believe in punishment. I believe in logical and natural consequences and earned privileges. So if you're talking about re withdrawing a privilege because it hasn't been earned, um, the conditions for that withdrawal need to be set in advance. You're welcome, Stacy. Lori, how do I encourage my 15-year-old to want to do well in her schoolwork? It's a struggle to get her to work. She should be an A student. Right now, I think that we have to lower the bar for a lot of kids. They're sick of COVID. Um, they're sick of online or hybrid learning. And I would sit down with her and the school and renegotiate what are your academic goals for this year and how are we going to get there? So you're going to make a goal roadmap. Bruno keeps asking me about cursing. You know, I guess the question is like, what curses are okay in your family and what curses aren't? Um, when I was growing, when, when my kids were growing up, um, we had a, a box for, it was money collected for a charity. And every time you cursed, you had to put 25 cents in. So you can imagine this was maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> 18, 15, 18 years ago. And um, my son was, I think, nine, so maybe 15 years ago. And um, my father uh, would, came up to visit one weekend. I really remember this. And um, 
he's he curses and he said this that and the other and my every time he said something he's like my son would say poppy that's 25 cents poppy that's 25 cents and um you know, it was a it was a holiday weekend, so my mom and everybody was staying in different places, and he stayed at a hotel. And then he came back the next day, and he walked through the door, and he took his wallet out, and he gave my son two dollars. He's like, "Just put it in the box. I'm just paying in advance." So, you know, what are the you know what happens with cursing? One family I work with, they um, basically said, you know, two curses and hand over your phone. Um, so everybody does it differently. Um, Lori, you're asking me about a son who's di somebody who's diagnosed with dyslexia. Um, there's a lot of frustration there, uh, different race from parents. Um, so, and he's not, he's the only, he's the only non-biological child. I definitely recommend some counseling for this family. Christine, yes, co-parenting complex kids after messy divorce. Okay, you got it. Um, uh, there's a lot of difference for this adopted child, and that could be contributing, of course. Um, yes, Bruno. Uh, um, all right, so there, there we're getting into some questions that are different than the topic, so I'm going to stop for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, please go to my Facebook page where there's lots of information, um, articles I post, things I'm doing. This is just I think a lot of resources that you'll find interesting. And plus, I'll be your friend forever at Dr. Sharon Saleem um, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and check out my, my website. There's a lot of resources on anger. Uh, and I think that could be helpful for you, www.drsharonsaleem.com. Thank you so much for joining. Sorry about the technical issues in the beginning. And I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful week.